that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, for uh, this opportunity that we've already had to gather. God, what you've already done in hearts. Father, the burden that you've laid on us. Father, about this coming day. Lord, teach us more tonight. We need to know more, Lord. So we pray you would speak to us from your word and do a work in our lives. Father, if there's one lost here tonight, I pray they'd be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We painted a pretty terrible picture this morning of the coming day of judgment and the things that will happen on this earth. And unfortunately for a good portion of the message tonight, it's not much different because that's exactly what the Bible says is going to happen. And so, you know, I, I just felt impressed when I was sitting over there, standing over there, whatever, before uh, I got up here to preach, that I want to call your attention to verse 36, because while it's not in the greater text that we've used today, it makes a very important point, and it tells us that we are to be watchful, we are to be looking toward these things, and most especially we're to have ourselves uh, in prayer toward these things. God, we see the signs of the times beginning to take shape. God, we see the things happening on the earth that are going to lead to this terrible time. And while we know we're only getting a, a glimpse of what is yet to come, God, we recognize that you are at work. You're about to bring this thing to a close. And so we need to pray. But, but if you notice what the warning is in that 36 verse is that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Listen, if you don't get anything else out of what I said this morning or what I say tonight, it is that you need to be prepared against this day. Not only do you need to be prepared against this day, do you need to be sure of your salvation. You need to know that you know that you know. But listen, you ought to also, because we're going to stand before the Son of Man. You remember us talking about uh, several weeks back now about the fact that we're going to be judged uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to stand before that Bama seat and He's going to judge us. And he's, our works are either going to stay or they're going to go, folks. Right. They're either going to burn or they're going to remain. We're going to face the judgment seat of Christ where all our works will be tried out. And listen, and we need to be found worthy when we stand before Him. And I'm not just talking about worthy uh, to, to go to heaven. We need to be found worthy of the callings He's placed on our life. If He saved us, then He's called us to go on His behalf. If He's saved us, then some of us even have answered a specific call to the ministry. God has told us something specifically that we're to be doing, and we ought to serve Him in the way that He's told us to serve Him, and so that when we, when we stand before Him one day, that we'll be found faithful. Yeah. Brother yeah. James and I were talking before service, and he asked me a question about the Antichrist, and to which I replied, because a lot of folks don't understand these end time things. They don't understand all the things that are coming on the earth. And maybe some people are scared. Maybe they didn't come back tonight. Maybe I scared them this morning. I don't know. <laughs> but you know, I, I want you to understand something. In the book of Revelation, while it is a difficult book to understand at times, while there is some deep water thinking you've got to do as you search the pages of Revelation, and you may be in the middle of the tribulation, you may go to a different time, and you may come back to another time, and you've got to pay attention to what's going on and line it all up. I want to tell you something. It is the only book in the Bible that gives a blessing to those who read it. I mean, God specifically speaks a blessing over people's lives for reading the book of Revelation. If you look at it, if you want to flip there for just a second, it says in, in, in Revelation, I, I just want to start in verse 1, but verse 3 is really where it gets down to, to what I'm talking about. It says, The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. The Lord Jesus gave it to John because these things were going to come to pass and how much more urgent in 2017 would the words of the book of the Revelation be to us if John, when he is receiving it, 
was receiving it, that it would shortly come to pass. And it can say that because it is a progression of time. It, it, the verses that, that apply to the churches that are written to the seven churches are seven literal churches that God has a word. Jesus Christ is speaking a word about those churches that existed even in John's day. So understand something. It's not that, oh, well, God's not come back yet. It was shortly come to pass. There's things in the book of Revelation that have already transpired. Right. They've already happened. And so he says, I'm showing this to my servant because they must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel and his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So John testifies that he was a faithful witness on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. The time is at hand. What if the time were at hand tonight? I want you to think for just a moment. I, 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 I'm not browbeating this topic, but I do want to be found faithful to say all that God's laid on my heart. I want to ask you something. If the Lord Jesus Christ were to come for His church tonight, and the beginning of sorrows of this time of tribulation started to come to pass, and you say, I'm saved tonight, but Jeff, I'm not worried about it. If you were to stand before God, would you stand with any regrets? Do you stand with any regrets tonight? If you were to find out tonight that the Lord came for His church and all these awful things we preached about this morning were coming to pass. We ought to live our lives with no regrets. I believe that verse number 36 is a warning for us not to live with any regrets. To be found faithful, fruitful, to be uh, assuring our hearts before Him that we know because these things will come to pass and we want to be able to stand before Him. I want to be able to hear, enter in to the joy of our Lord. I don't want to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. You're supposed to be rigid if you're expecting that other one to happen. Not to me. I settled that 14 years ago. That I'm fearful for some folks that it could happen. So you ought to assure your hearts before Him. But I want to jump back into this message this morning regarding this time that's coming on the earth. And I hope and pray that I can give a little bit more clarity to this time based on God's Word. What's going to happen is God's righteous judgment is poured out on an unbelieving world. I want to demonstrate some responses that happen from the Word of God during this time that will be going on. This unbelieving world will respond to the things that are happening on the earth. We, we saw this morning that one of their responses is that their hearts are failing them for fear. Literally, that word failing, I, I said this morning, is to breathe out the soul. It's a medical term. And so it, it's not, uh, it's not uh, unbelievable that we would find that in the Gospel of Luke considering he was a physician. And so he would say that. He might, he might use that term. It's amazing how God spoke His Word. He gave it to the right men to say it the right way with the right words. And a lot of times, guess what? Because of how God operates, it even comes out to where it's what they would say anyways. Right. It's how they would describe it anyways. It's, it, God took them and they were just a vessel. They were just a pen in the hand of a writer as they penned these words. And so Luke he says that they'll breathe out the soul. They'll, they'll be in such despair. That's only one response that we see in the Word of God of this unbelieving world as all these things come to pass. As all the plagues that if you go and read the book of Revelation, God pours out judgments on them. And there's judgment after judgment after judgment. And there's, there's locusts upon the earth. And there's hell upon the earth. And, and there's all earthquakes uh, happening on the earth. And there's all these things that transpire. All these, these, these awful things are coming to pass. And that's why the Bible says in Luke 21, 22, For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. 
You want to understand the things that are going to come on this earth? You not only got to read the book of Revelation. You need to get over there and read the book of Daniel. You have to get over there and read the book of Ezekiel. Listen, there's so much in God's Word. And He wrote it all down. And His Word agrees. His Word is interconnected. Listen, when we find something that appears to be a contradiction, it's because we're not choosing to be deep enough into the Word of God. Man. It's because we're not choosing to look and see, well, how could that be? Or why is that happening? It's always, always, always with a purpose from a holy God. Always. God has spoken by His prophets. He confirmed it by His Savior. And He, and he, and he tells it again through His disciples. Right. You follow me? All these things were written and they will come to pass. And this day of vengeance is spoken of in the Old Testament. It says that there would be a time that would come upon the Jewish people where they would look to God that it was day. And when it was day, they would look to God that it were night. They just want the day to be over. Right. Because of the things that will be happening to them. It's a terrible, terrible time. A time of vengeance. A time where people will utterly want to die on this earth. If they want to die because of the things that they are both expecting and the things that they are experiencing. So if you're writing down notes or you got your notes, you might want to highlight that. There's two reasons. They're expecting and they're experiencing. Another response is found from these unbelieving people in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 9 and verse number 20 and 21. Revelation 9, 20 and 21. If you got it, you can flip there. It's up there. It says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood. Now, get this. Which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Isn't it amazing? Let me, let me stop there. I'll hold that verse there. Isn't it amazing the things that people choose to worship instead of a God who created them, a God who designed them, who designed this earth, a God who can save them out of all this tribulation. They choose still to, to continue to worship things that can do nothing for them. Right. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something tonight. I don't only have cash, but I got a little cash. You can pray to this money God right here. And this money, God, can't do anything for you. You can pray to that money, God. You can say, we've not got enough money. We wish we had more money. And I'm here to tell you, that money can't do a thing for you. Right. Right. You can go to your job and listen, if they choose to, they can fire you tomorrow. And your, your, your career will be over. Right. Yet people worship their workplaces more than they worship the God of heaven. And you know what? As we go through this perplexing time that the Bible spoke of in Luke 21, as we go through this perilous time this world does, I'm not going through it. I'm out of here, baby. Right. But these people who will be experiencing this awful time, the Bible says that they will continue to worship those things that can't hear them, can't see them, can't walk for them, can't do one blessed thing for them. Man. Verse 21, it says, Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. I mean, really, wrap your mind around this. They have seen the awful things that are happening. And the Bible says that they are unrepentant. But let me tell you something. They're not just unrepentant. I want you to understand. It's not just that they're not willing to say, Oh, well, uh, uh, I realize now, God, that uh, I, I, you're doing all this because we've been unbelieving, so I'm going to go this way. Understand, there are folks who are coming into tribulation who won't be able to believe. They've heard the gospel. They've rejected it. But there will be folks that will hear the gospel in the kingdom or in, that, or in the tribulation period that have never heard the gospel before. So, Brother Jeff, now wait a minute. Everybody's heard the gospel. Surely no, folks, they're not. No, not every, the Bible's not translated into every language yet. The 
The Bible's not been preached in every nation. It will be preached in every nation. It will be preached across the face of the globe as a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. But listen, even in spite of them hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, some folks will be so dark in their hearts. They'll be so cold and indifferent. They'll be so unrepentant that not only will they not turn from their wicked ways, when you go further into the book of Revelation and you make it to chapter 16 in the book of Revelation, we find that these same people are not only unrepentant, but they are blaspheming God. Right. What do you mean, Brother Jim? Well, just go there. Just go there. I didn't do the notes, but you go there. Revelation 16. See if this don't sound like the same thing that's happening in the other passages that we've read so far. I mean, listen to this. In Revelation 16, 21. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. Do you know how much a talent is? My Bible says 75 pounds. Good gracious. Hail falling from heaven, the weight of 75 pounds. And, and it says, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Yeah, it sounds great to me. It's huge, it's enormous. That's Donald Trump being at right there. <laughs> That is Donald Trump's size hell. But listen, their response to this hell coming upon the earth, you know what their response is? Their response is to curse God. It's to shout profanities at God. It's to say, you, whatever, God, who are you? Why are you doing this to us? You know why they're doing it. Well, you know why it's happening. I think about me and my losses before I got saved. My brother's here tonight. He can tell you this, and I've shared this a few times, but I'm telling you, before I got saved, we was experiencing some bad straight line wind storms in our area. Had been for several months, and it seemed like every time we would have one, it'd get worse and worse and worse and worse. And finally, one night, it, it come through one of those straight line wind storms. And it wasn't raining. And our dad, he, he, I remember daddy used to tell us, he'd say, Now listen, if it's not raining and the wind's blowing, it, it's dangerous out there. Tornadoes can spawn, all kinds of things can happen. And the wind's just, I mean, it's just blowing unmercifully on our house. And, uh, and, and it is, it's thundering and lightning, but it's not raining. And I'm laying in there in my bed. And all at once, there's this. this this cloud of thunder and this lightning just lights up the sky. I mean, I could see all the way over, the whole, over to the hospital, which was probably a mile and a half, I guess, the way I was looking. Maybe shorter, I don't know. But it was, it was a good distance. And, 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 I, and I was, I'm, I'm laying there in bed, and I see all this, and I hear this loud thunder, and I jump out of bed, and I come out in the hallway, and I look toward the kitchen, and Ryan's at the refrigerator getting ice. I said, what was that? He said, I believe the Lord came back. <laughs> and I said, don't say that. You know why? Because I had more than a thimble full of knowledge of the Word of God. If the Lord had just come back, then me and him were in a lot of trouble. I haven't been checked on my mama yet, but me and him were in a lot of trouble. <laughs> 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 It's about to get real. <laughs> and I know it's funny because, hey, listen, that's how, that's how, that's how lost I was. Wow. That's how God was, trying to get, God was trying to get my attention. But you know what? I never once, in the midst of all that we went, to up to that point, went through up to that point, in the midst of everything that we've been through as a family, and then now the, 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 the straight line wind storms and you know, some of the devastation that was causing for certain people happened for us, but I never once thought about cursing God. I never once thought about shaking my fist at heaven. And yet, we're reading in the Bible tonight about folks cursing at God and refusing to repent of their sins because of the troublesome times that are happening on the earth. I've often wondered 
How folks can experience such trouble sometimes here on this earth and still not turn to God. Some people can have the absolute worst circumstances and yet still reject the fact that there's a God that really loves them. I've come in contact with folks. And they'll be telling you how bad life is and the things that are going on. And, and you'll say, well, hey, let me tell you about the Lord. Let me tell you about what the Lord has done for me. And they say, I don't want to hear about you, Jesus. You may not want to hear about my Jesus. But one day you're going to stand before him, whether you hear about him right now or not. Right. One day you'll stand before my Lord and my God. Or I don't need, I don't need a sermon. I love it. I, I've heard it from church people. Tell you something's going on in their life, you start to talk to them about the Lord and tell them what the Bible says. I don't need a sermon right now. Really? <laughs> well, what do you need, pray to? You must know. Because I was fixing to give you the one thing I thought you needed, which was truth. God. And you don't want that. You know what that problem is? Tickle our ears. Make us feel good. You know what that is? That's one of the signs of the end of times. Amen. Tell us what we want to hear, preacher. Walk us down the primrose path. People experience awful times. Don't turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do they not do that? I'll tell you part of the reason is because of what we talked about this morning. The enemy lies. The, the enemy sells them a lie. If God really loved you, then you would not be experiencing this. You would not be going through this. And it's lies, lies, lies. I know that those entering the tribulation period having heard the gospel will be blinded to see because of this. They will be unrepentant. But there are people in that time who will hear the gospel and have to make a choice. There will be people during this time. Now, I painted doom and gloom. Let me tell you a little hope here. There will be some people who will be saved. They will have heard it. They will choose to repent. And they will have to choose, listen, to reject this worldly system which will have its grip on the majority of the world. The Antichrist will be working in such a way that he will be brokering deals to have power over nations and pretty soon he will have the whole power over the whole world. It will appear and he will be in charge. And listen, folks, they, these folks who want to be saved in this time will have to reject him and his worldly system. And in essence, they will give their lives in order to be saved. Today, you can be saved because the Savior gave His life in your place. The Bible says He's the propitiation for our sins. Not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. You can take the sacrifice that He made. But there will be folks who will have to die for their faith. They will be martyred for their faith. We think we live in trouble sometimes here and now we think that these are challenging days that people don't want to hear what we have to say. But I want you to understand the level that the wickedness of man will reach during this awful time. In Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 through 10, the Word of God says, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand times. 203 score days. That's 42 months. Clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power. Listen to this. Talking about the, the plagues that are coming on the earth. Listen to what these two men of God will be able to do. These have the power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophets. Have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that is sent down the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, 
For also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their bodies. Listen to this. The people of the world shall see their bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. The wickedness of man. Now let me sidebar here for a second. A lot of people when they read this passage of Scripture, you know what they want to do? Oh, let's talk about who the two witnesses are. Let's try to figure out who the two witnesses are. And I've heard all the debates. And I have my own opinion. But let me tell you what one guy said. I was reading some, some testimony and commentary around this passage of Scripture. And, and this guy's the smartest guy. He said, these men are let, best left shrouded in the mystery that God has left them in. And for us to worry about the rest of that passage. Right. Well, why? Because if we could figure out who they were, it wouldn't do us no good. But what we can learn from the passage of Scripture certainly could do us and some lost soul a lot of good. What does the Bible say about this time period? Well, it tells us in this time period where men's hearts are failing them that it will be highlighted, notice this, it will be highlighted by an utter rejection of the open proclamation of God's Word. Are we getting there? Are we getting there? Does the world want the church to show? Did that research tell us enough this morning about people's attitudes? They want us to go over to Syria and fight with ISIS and let God send us to hell? Hello? Foolishness. That's where we're at. Nobody wants to hear the word today the way they used to want to hear the word. Why is there no thirst for the word of God? Because we're living in perilous times. Yeah. And so there will be an utter rejection at this end time tribulation period of the open proclamation of God's word. These men for three and a half years will preach and bring plagues upon the earth. They'll shut the heavens and it won't rain. Unless they say it can rain. People will try to hurt them and they will with the words of their mouth, bring fire out and consume them. Whose power are they working after? God's. It's what God's going to do one day. And Lord Jesus Christ is coming. He's going to speak the words of His mouth and consume our adversaries. But then there's this appearance that Satan gets victory over these witnesses and kills them by his agent, the Antichrist. Well, don't be deceived. The Antichrist, just as much as these two witnesses work after the power of God, this man called Antichrist works after the power of Satan. He is after the working of Satan. He is doing Satan's bidding upon this earth. But notice, I want you to notice, we, we have the response of people in Luke 21 where their hearts are failing them. We have the response of them in what was Revelation chapter 9 where they're, they're, they're unrepentant in Revelation 16 where they're blaspheming God. And here in Revelation 11, listen, when these two, these two witnesses, these two prophets are killed, it turns into a pagan Christmas. It turns into an unbelieving world's Christmas. I mean, they're ecstatic that these guys have died. They send gifts to one another and they won't allow them to be buried. They leave them in the streets and they are, oh, happy day, these men who are tormenting us that were speaking judgment and plagues over us, they're dead. Many of these people are rejecting one of the final attempts of God to reach them with the life-changing truth of the gospel. Folks, that ought to burden our hearts. How motivated should we be to reach people in our day and time when the door of grace is wide open? When we see the level that humanity will reach 
as they are preached to, as they are told of the impending coming of the Lord, as the righteous judge, as they're speaking these, the, this time and these plagues upon the earth, and instead of people repenting, they rejoice at their death. That's the spirit of Satan having control over an unbelieving world. You wonder why some people can do the things that they can do today. The heinous things that we see in the news and hear about. Well, how can people do that kind of thing? How can they have, they've allowed Satan to have control? There is no telling what man is capable of when he chooses to reject God and follow the worldly system that is headed by Satan. The door of grace is wide open. I know there are people out there, don't get me wrong, that are cynical, but the Bible is clear. There will never exist an easier time than now for people to be saved. Yet during this time, listen, I want to go here and, and, and kind of draw this all together. Yet during this time, even though this wickedness of man will reach this level, there will be a great multitude that will come out of this tribulation and they will be saved. They, there will be some who have been witnesses for God and then there will be some who are saved of God. Contrary to some people's understanding, there's a great number of people. There's a hundred, at least 144,000 Jewish witnesses that were told of. The Bible tells us and, and the, several times, namely in the book of Revelation, but the first mention of Revelation uh, is in Revelation 7 and 4. It said, I heard the number which were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So at least 144,000 Jewish witnesses come out. And then there's a great multitude that comes from this tribulation period when we read in Revelation 7, 13 and 14 that they're redeemed by the Lord during this awful time. It says, One of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence come they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white, in the blood of the Lamb. Why is that important? Why is that important? Because throughout all time, God maintains a people who are dedicated to Him and who stand for Him. God, even in the darkest hour that has ever been on this earth, still has a heart for those that do not yet know his glorious gospel. Even in the midst of his righteous judgment, he has these lights shining, offering an opportunity for people to reject the worldly system, to reject the Antichrist and the false prophet. And I hope and pray that in the time in which we live, which seems like a dark hour, that we will be found faithful. That we will be a people who are dedicated and stand for Him when nobody else will. When nobody else will take the stand. That we will take the stand. And see, then we get over here in Luke 21 and we get down to verses 27 and 28 and we hear encouragement from the words of Jesus. When he says, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Listen, these folks, these 144,000, they're sealed, they're protected during this time of tribulation. There's this, there's this group, this multitude that comes out of the tribulation period, but Christ provides assurance here in this passage that the promise of His return will happen before their very eyes. So wait a minute, Brother Jeff. We're looking for the coming of the Lord. Oh, you're, you're looking for the Lord to shout and say, Come up here! And away we go. But these 
folks who are saved out of this tribulation will be looking for the visible, present return of Christ. Right. And when the sign of the sun appears in the sky and all these things that have come to pass that the Bible has already told us about, Jesus says that those who are probably in their prayer closets praying against this evil world system, those who are meeting secretly in their homes just so that they can have an opportunity to read God's Word and encourage one another with God's Word because it's all they've got to hang on to. Everything else has gone to hell in the world. And so all they've got is God and all they've got is their Bible and all they've got is each other and the fellowship of other believers. Listen, the Bible says when you begin to see all these things, get up off the floor and look up to the sky because your salvation is coming. Amen. Amen. Your salvation is coming. Because according to the Word of God, He will be coming to this earth to gather His elect from across the face of the earth. He will be coming to execute His final judgment on this earth upon an unbelieving world before bringing finality to their eternal destination at His great white throne. The Bible gives us a picture of this. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 6-9, through 9, it says, Seeing it is a righteous thing with God, with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Folks, I've been telling people this at the reality house. And I'm going to tell you tonight. I'm convinced. That the horror of hell, the horror of hell is not the fire. It's not that the worm does not die. It is not that it's, there's no darkness. Or it's not that there's darkness there. It's not that. It's not that there's utter darkness. The horror of hell is the fact that people will be cast from the presence of the Lord. You do not know. A time when God's not been around. Because God's in His people. God lives in His people. You are who are saved the temple of the Lord. And His presence is in this place. His presence is on this earth. But the horror of this finality of His judgment is people are cast from the presence of of the Lord forever. Why in the world would anyone remain unprepared knowing what is coming? I don't preach tonight to create fear. God says these things ought to be fearful to you. I preach this tonight because God says in His Word that we should fear this time. If you're lost tonight, you ought to fear it because you've heard the gospel. And you go through and let Jesus come for his church and this great time of tribulation begin and you're lost. That's it. You won't say, oh, I, I, I see what's happened now. My, my family, my friends have gone on to be with the Lord. They've been raptured. I see now. I see now. You won't be able to do that. You'll be blind. You won't be able to see the truth. God will allow you to be punished and He will righteously judge you. But for the church, we talked about fear being alarm. This time should alarm us. And it ought to motivate us to act. These things will 